I want to talk to you today about how we together contribute to curing cancer. And by we, I mean the pathology community. I mean you, the diagnostician, the pathology staff, the ones that contribute to the patient's diagnosis and guide their therapy. What I'd like to do is give you the example of two patients um, that illustrate how it is that the pathology laboratory was instrumental in prolonging their lives. Before I talk about the two patients, I do want to talk about cancer, the nature of cancer. And I'll go back uh, to ancient mythology. You're looking at a Greek vase, and Hercules is uh, fighting the Hydra. It's a multi-headed serpent and every time he lops off a head, it grows back. And so it's nearly an impossible beast to kill. And I look at this as representative of what we fight today with cancer, the multi-headed beast, and one therapy after another, and the recurrence of the tumor. And, uh, and I see that what's essential in our fighting the multi-headed beast is that we have a very high level of information about the nature of that beast. And that's where the pathology lab comes in. That's where we, the next generation pathology testing comes in. So uh, let's talk about the first patient. Uh, Tom is a 40 year old uh, with a metastatic colon cancer. He presented had surgery, chemotherapy, anti-EGFR therapy, and within weeks had metastases to his lungs, multiple metastases. He was a stage four with a grim prognosis. Tom, as the father of four, uh, Tom as a, um, a fighter, um, was very motivated to see that all and anything that could be done to change these odds would be affected. And so he took us down the path that the metastases, the non-responding tumors in his lungs should be removed surgically. And when those lesions came out, there was a surprise. And that surprise is that the metastasis did not have the same chemistry as the primary. You see here now the EGFR is negative but now he's IGF1R positive. And so his tumor had evolved. As fate would have it, that very same year was the first effective targeted therapy against IGF1R, and Tom was one of the first patients to respond and indeed went into a remission. But it then happened months later and altogether seven times that he had recurrences. And quite remarkably, those seven recurrences, as measured by immunohistochemistry and later by sequencing, uh, were represented an entirely different evolution from uh, the original tumor. And what we then engaged in is matching that change to targeted therapy. And uh, when I look back, when I reflect over the 10-year fight that he had, and I plot out all of the changes that occurred, then this is the image I come up with, very similar to the hydra on that ancient Greek vase. So you see here the multiple branches 
as his tumor typically underwent a secondary uh, phenotypic adaptive change. And then to the right, connected with the dotted line, are the drugs that were relevant to that occurrence. Multiple times, one after another, that drug, in essence, lopped off the head. And it was that action, the repetitive nature of it, uh, that bought the time. And so with an expected uh, prognosis of nine months, it went on altogether for 10 years. In the end, uh, we lost Tom as that last tumor was a, a metastasis to the brain. And uh, it was um, then too late. And I look back and what I would say is a positive is that um, to my point about the importance of the pathology lab is that the lab um, was a big factor in generating a high level of information which informed his therapy, which was the most intelligent way of dealing with the multi-headed serpent. So I, I think it tells us how important a pathology lab is going to be in the future how important your capability of generating an array of results, the timeliness of those results, um, and how it is that we're pathologies going from simply making the diagnosis to uh, also defining the nature of the beast and informing therapy. This brings us to the second patient who is a 70-year-old with a metastatic uh, malignant melanoma who also has a very poor prognosis. We're talking about only 15% of patients surviving beyond five years, and that's pretty similar to what Tom's odds were. And like Tom, in order to change the shape of this curve, you have to do something differently. And it turns out in the case of malignant melanoma, as with Tom, the new opportunity had to do with new therapies, new drugs. But those drugs are only effective when the target of that therapy is articulated. And in a very astounding uh, turn in the history of medicine, we now have drugs which allow us to boost the host response to the tumor and we have the new generation of what are known as immunotherapies. It turns out that our beast, our hydra, besides having seven heads, also has another trick. And that trick is it can put up a force field. It can go invisible, and Hercules can't see it. And it turns out that your own body in rejecting cancer is very capable of what I'll call self-healing. But this nasty beast puts up the force field and the force field makes the tumor invisible to the body. So we come now to this exciting moment in medicine in which there are drugs now that block the force field. So where we've come to with patients with malignant melanoma, if their tumor has the blockade, and we can detect it by immunohistochemistry, and we can show that the host cells are there but they can't get in the tumor, then the rational thing is to give the anti-blockade drug and uh, to treat the patient with immunotherapy. So for our 70-year-old, uh, what we illustrate here, on the left, you see all the dark cells are the host responding cells, and the pale pink cells are the metastatic melanoma in the patient's lymph node. And to the right, you see in brown, is the immunohistochemistry, uh, the multiplexing, which shows in brown the force field on the tumor, and in green, the host cells attempting to respond. So we can say that this tumor is evading therapy through this blockade, regular chemotherapy, and by adding the anti-blockade, the patient's very likely to respond. And all of this work, done on a benchmark, done very well, done very correctly, sure enough, directed the therapy of this patient and uh, 
That patient, is, I can vouch, is responding very well to the therapy. And uh, here's the team that produced that result. And on the right is yours truly, happily responding to my infusion. So I, I will end on this note that uh, from the point of view of being a patient, that uh, what you do as a diagnostician, what the pathology lab uh, does in providing the diagnosis is a really critical, important uh, thing to do that benefits the patient. You are personally critical, your lab is critical, the sophistication of your lab is a very important attribute 